What's going on everyone? It's Jacqueline here. In today's video, I want to talk about the iPhone 11 and for many different reasons. First of all, it's a really interesting device um, and it's going to be one of the most popular this year. But also I want to talk about why it's A, a very strategic move from Apple and B, something that really shows us where Apple thinks its future business is going to be coming from. So I want to talk about that in this video. So we're going to have to backtrack a little bit to last week, the keynote, uh, Apple's annual September keynote. I was watching it. A lot of you were probably watching it as well. Uh, and they started out by revealing the iPhone 11. And uh, I could tell right away, this is a clear update to the iPhone XR. So I'm thinking, OK, the pricing is probably going to be pretty similar in like the 700s. And then they announced the price, and it's $699. And I was kind of shocked, because it's a much better phone than the XR uh, at a cheaper price. And then they kind of announced the whole iPhone line and they said that they're trying to make uh, options at different price points for all consumers. And they kept the iPhone 8 and the 10R at significantly reduced prices that make them a lot more likely for a lot more people. And I was kind of thinking about it as the day went on and thinking about why did Apple do this? There's definitely a reason. And I think I figured it out. So in this video, I want to break it down through the lens of the iPhone 11, why the iPhone 11 is priced like that, and why I think the iPhone 11 is going to be the clear most popular iPhone this year. So the answer and the overlying theme in this video is going to be that Apple's in it for the long game. They're a very established company at this point, and they can afford to make financial decisions that might hurt their earnings or their potential earnings a little bit in the short term. They're more interested in long-term success than money that they're going to make from the iPhone 11 in this particular quarter, for example. And so in order to understand this, we need to understand why people use iPhones. Now, three to six years ago, if you asked someone, hey, why do you use an iPhone? A lot of the answers that you would get would be, I feel like it's the best one on the market. But if you ask someone now, nine times out of 10, at least in my experience, they either say, I love how it works with the rest of Apple's products, or I love iMessage, or, I love AirDrop, I love the services that the iPhone gives me, and I can't get them anywhere else. And the change in the answer, it's really important. It shows that Apple is selling more than a phone now. They're selling an experience, an entry into a system of products and services that seamlessly work together. The iPhone 11 will act as a customer's vehicle to enter into Apple's ecosystem and experience seamless relationships with other products, like MacBook Pros, or relationships with service like Apple TV+, iMessage, Apple Music. Over the last quarter, Apple sales on hardware have decreased, but their sales on service-based products have increased and they're continuing to increase rapidly. So the iPhone 11 enables Apple to have a new market of people to sell these services to. The iPhone 11 acts as their ticket to get other things. When Apple increased their prices a couple years back with the iPhone 10, they not only alienated a lot of customers that could no longer afford that, but the people that could have afford that have been a lot more hesitant to upgrade because not only was it a lot of money, but a couple years down the line, it's still a great phone, which shows that Apple is able to make hardware and software that lasts for a while, but it means that they're not getting a lot of people buying new phones every year anymore like they used to. And with that price increase, other companies increase their prices as well. Samsung's flagships are now a lot more expensive and other major players in the industry have increased their prices because now they know that consumers are willing to pay for it. So now Apple comes out with the iPhone 11 at $699 and suddenly a price that was pretty standard maybe four years ago is now kind of amazing. Like it gets the attention. It's called like the cheap iPhone, right? You're getting news articles saying like, this is the affordable iPhone this year. Um, and it's starting to look pretty good, especially because they went with a name that doesn't make it feel like the budget option. Like the iPhone XR felt like you were getting like a reduced phone, but the iPhone 11 feels like standard. It feels like the average phone. And they've upgraded it enough and made it similar enough to the iPhone 11 Pro that people that have like an iPhone 8 or an older device will be able to justify that upgrade because it's not going to cost $1,000 um, and it's still going to give them a ton of amazing features. And so existing customers are going to want to upgrade to stay with the ecosystem, but new customers that have wanted the Blue Bubble and iMessage and other seamless things that come when you get into the Apple ecosystem, they're giving them a good way to get in, a cheap way to get in. And I think that Apple knows this. They're in it for the long game. Short term, will they lose potential money because of the decrease in price? Yes. But long term, they're going to gain new customers in their ever-growing list of services. And they're probably going to get pretty long-term customers as well. Because once you're in, it's kind of hard to leave. Add that to the fact that if any customer is looking for a new tech product to work with their phone, they're going to look at Apple first. They're, if they want a new smartwatch, best one to get for an iPhone user is the Apple Watch. They want a pair of headphones, why not get the AirPods? They want a credit card with some rewards, they can now get that too. 
seems like Apple has really worked on creating a portfolio of products that are not only some of the best in whatever market they're in, but that also communicate and work really well together, that once you're in, it feels like this family of products that you wouldn't want to leave. There's not many other ecosystems by other companies that are as full as Apple. And I think that they know that. I think that they know that once someone gets an iPhone, like the iPhone 11, they're gonna stay with Apple. So by pricing it at a more affordable entry point, they're gonna get more people that are gonna buy it. So I think big picture, this really shows us that Apple is focusing more on providing a great experience and providing one great product. And I think that we can also see that they're kind of turning into a service company as well. If you look at the keynote, a lot of what they talked about were services. They talked about Apple Arcade, they talked about Apple TV Plus, and when you buy a new iPhone, you're getting a year of Apple TV Plus, again, short-term potential wealth loss, but long-term, they're hoping you're gonna like Apple TV Plus and then continue that subscription. Uh, so I think it's really interesting. I would love to know your thoughts about it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit subscribe. I mean, you're really gonna to wanna to hit this button. There's a lot of awesome content coming, so hit it right there, check another video right here, and I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Thank you for giving me your time and thank you for watching this one. I'll see you later. Bye.